now we can actually go back to our example and what would the first step be? The first step of our now configured email scheduling app would be to access the OAuth server on the authorization endpoint. Now, how do we do this? Accessing the authorization endpoint. Here I've already prepared the URL of the authorization endpoint. You can find that reading the Google documentation. Now we can configure it with the data that we already got in the previous step. So as you can see here, there are some bold things that we need to replace. So for example, the URL encoded redirect URI, I just take it from my list of configurations up here and I paste it in. All right, that's good. Now next up is client ID. Just uh, watch out that you don't forget anything. Now it's configured. So this is the URL that we will use for authorization in the browser. Just open a new window and there you go. Okay, choose your Google account. This is my Google account. Now comes the consent screen and the consent screen says the email scheduling app Remember, that's the name of our app that we just created. Would like to view and manage your email. Okay, well, that's cool that it does this, but why does it do this actually? Well, let's have a look at the URL that we pasted. We put in the redirect URI. Okay, that's just from our configuration. Then we have the client ID. The client ID identifies the email scheduling app. So that's why Google knows that now it should display email scheduling up app up here. Then there are a couple more parameters, which I've just pre configured. And this is the scopes parameter scopes is here set to HTTPS mail.gmail.com. And the whole thing is URL encoded. And that tells the Google auth server that later on, I would like to have access to emails, I would like to view and manage my emails. It's kind of the permissions that I request using this. Based on the scope parameter, Google knows that it should display this permission here to me, I can just say accept. And what it does is here, you might remember, this is the redirect URI that we've configured. This first part. And then the second part, you can see the code query parameter. And this is actually authorization code that we got from Google. So very cool things happened here in the background. We send a request to the auth server like this. The auth server then went ahead to ask the resource owner. I was already logged in. So the login didn't happen really. It happened through the session, but what did happen is that the auth server asked me if I really consent to this type of access for the email scheduling app. And then it created this authorization code and sent this authorization code back to the email scheduling app. Now really cool. Now we can go to the next step and get a token for this authorization code that we just created. So here's the same thing I've already prepared a template for you, which I got from the Google API documentation. Now we just need to fill in the code that we've received. It's in your browser. Watch out that you don't forget anything. Then we need to have our URL encoded redirect URI, which we've already prepared. Then we need again our client ID. And we need the client secret. All right. So this is the first time that we use curl now, because what we need to do is send a post, not a get. 
The browser always sends a get. Curl is configured so that it uses a post request. It also uses several headers. So here's the content type application URL encoded string. So it's basically the same as this would be sent from a HTML form. It's just a type of information that we're sending. Post can have a body and the values of the body of the HTTP body are sent with the minus D parameter. Here is the content of this minus D parameter. It's a lot of information. And it's several URL encoded parameters. It's first a grant type. It's an authorization code. It's the code and the redirect URI. In addition, the client ID and the client secret. And all of this is sent to this HTTP address, to this token endpoint, as you can see here. Okay, so now let's take all of this, paste it into a terminal, just into your command prompt or into your bash. Now we got an access token. You can see the results coming back from Google it came really quickly. Here's an access token, the token type, and when it's going to expire. All right, so the really valuable information here is the access token. So let me take this access token and just paste it here because I'm sure we're going to need it. Good. Now we would like to do something with this access token, right? So let's go back to our example. Now that we got the access token, we want to send it to the resource server. The resource server is going to do something in the background with it and check with the OAuth server if it's really valid token. We'll get an answer. Hopefully it's yes. The resource server will get the resource that was originally requested from him. Okay, let's go and do that. Next step is resource access. I've already prepared a curl command for that. And what you need to do is fill in the access token. So we go ahead and fill in the access token, which we have received. And then we need to fill in the authenticated email account. So that's the email account that you logged into. All right, here we use an API. This is the address of the API. It's a um, Gmail API for accessing the messages of a specific user. It can only be the authenticated user, of course. We need to have our access token in the authorization bearer header. Now let's take all of this, paste it into our terminal, and there we go. We get a list of messages that are on this Gmail account. Okay, we just see the IDs and a thread ID, but that's basically my inbox, right? And if we want to have a specific message, we go and take one of these message IDs and add it back here after messages. And then we go ahead and do this request again. And now we get an email back. So there are several headers in this email. So here's our request that we send. And then it says, okay, there are several labels. It's in the label inbox. It's in the label important, unread, when it was sent, when it was received. The subject is test. It was sent from me to me. It doesn't have any body because it's just a test email, right? Um, but you could read all your emails like this. And this is exactly what the email scheduling app needs to have access to. And it's enabled by OAuth. And now we've basically done manually all the steps that the email scheduling app really needs to do automatically. You would program all of these steps out 
using your favorite programming language, you would have access to your emails using OAuth. Now let's just recap all the steps that we did. The first step was really that we need to register. We need to register Google Developer App and we needed to enable APIs. We needed to get our client ID, configure it correctly. And then we got lots of information from it. We got uh, redirect URI, URL encoded redirect URI, client ID and client secret. So the first step that the app actually performs would be to call the authorization endpoint. And it calls the authorization endpoint using the browser. This authorization endpoint needs to be pre-configured. It needs to be containing all the redirect URIs, client IDs that we've gotten from the registration. Then we go on calling the token endpoint once we have gotten the response back from the authorization endpoint. Here we did it with a curl call because we have to send a post. Then we get back the access token. And once we have the access token, we can do the resource access 